皆さんおはよう。Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you for your attendance、uh, yesterday. And today、um, we will have this、uh, summary session、uh, in the morning. And there are people online. So once again, let's go around the table、uh, to introduce ourselves. I'll be serving as the MC today. I'm from the Exchange Programs Division of MOFA. I'm the director. My name is Watanabe Shinji. And so we would like to start the second day's、uh, wrap up session. And if you are joining us online, you will be able to hear the simultaneous interpretation through Zoom. So please utilize the interpretation or language button on the Zoom screen to select English. And people joining us online、uh, may not have been with us yesterday,、uh, some of them. So I would like to. Introduce、um, the people attending on site in person in the alphabetical order of their countries. From Argentina, we have Christian san. From Australia, Jason san. From Bangladesh, Korshed san. From Brazil, Paula san. From Canada, Natalia san. From Colombia, Mauricio san. From India, Ashok san. From Mexico, Luisa san. From New Zealand, Paul san. From Papua New Guinea,、uh, Ombo san. From the Solomon Islands, Lindon san. From Turkmenistan, Merdan san. From the USA, John san. And from Uzbekistan, Damira san. So these are the 14 people joining us here on site. And joining us online, we have audience from Asia, Oceania, North, South, Central America,、uh, Middle East, and Africa. Thank you for joining us despite the time difference. Now, yesterday we have looked at regional incentive support for the students, PR on studying Japan, and some specific initiatives as well as challenges in each country. So, we have taken up four themes yesterday. And then after that, we didn't have a live stream online, but we divided into three groups by region、uh, to talk about the possibility of collaboration in each region. And now、uh, we would like to hear from the 14 countries joining us on site about what are the next steps,、um, what kind of actions、uh, each country can take going forward. So, today, first, we will start from presentations from Bangladesh,、uh, Khurshed san, India, Ashok san, Turkmenistan, Mirdan san, and Uzbekistan, Damira san. After we receive、uh, comments from all four, we will have a QA session. So, starting from、uh, Korshed san from Bangladesh. Thank you very much. Yes, last、uh, two days we discussed on the、uh, different issues, but、uh, in different w a y but it's a common issue how we can improve the <coughs> Japanese、uh, language and culture in our countries. And on discussing, we got information that what the problems we are facing and what we are doing. Uh, in my case, we can say that at present in Bangladesh, we are uh, doing uh, informing the students up to the university level. But I think in future, someday in future, we'll、uh, go to the more lower level, the like、uh, technical college, polytechnic college, and also in the high school level, to inform them the, about the Japanese language, culture, And the、uh, uh, education facilities and, and way of、uh, how they can、uh, pursue their higher education in Japan. And,、um, and this way we can improve ourselves in my countries. And on the other hand, definitely in the different r e g i o n we got the information、uh, what they're doing. We l i k e c o m m u n i c a t e in our policies and to improve this situation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that.、Uh, moving on to Ashok san from India. Thank 
you so much. <clears throat> it has been a very enriching interaction. We have learned a lot, shared a lot of experiences. I would uh, focus on two issues. One is the regional dimension that we heard yesterday. And uh, for me, this regional dimension, expansion of the regional dimension is important, not only across India, but within India. Because I think uh, we have had very good examples of how do you involve local bodies into our work. Though we are Alumni Association of Japan, but like-minded organizations uh, also exist. And I think some of the examples that we ha I heard ye yesterday and day before, it looks very important that we should now connect with like-minded organizations uh, in other parts of the country especially the local chapters, if we can create, that would be a very important next step for all of us. <coughs> the other point which uh, I learned very important point was, how do you go up to the school level? The polytechnic, the schools and so on, and that has been a uh, if I may admit, a weak point for us. We have been concentrating more on universities, but I think the next step, we should try to expand our reach to schools, because I'm happy that with some of our initiatives, we have been able to start uh, Japanese language in higher secondary, and but I think we have to follow up on that the school students have started learning Japanese, but then I think we need to gradually sort of sensitize them for higher studies in Japan. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. Hi, Ashok -san. Thank you very much, Ashok San. And next, um, Merdan San from Turkmenistan, please. I would like to thank like uh, each and every participant uh, to this uh, wonderful session or seminar. Uh, I suppose that you know like uh, since we have uh, since we are like uh, pretty new like in this uh, by opening like uh, our organization or the association recently, I see that like many of the participants uh, are at a different level with a different intensity like in their. Uh, integration and in their execution of the activities and since uh, uh, I could hear everyone uh, the, I could hear the operations of uh, each and every person uh, participants here and I could learn uh, many things in terms of like setting up uh, in terms of like the organizational structure and uh, the various activities that they do and how they penetrate and what uh, are the challenges that they meet on the local as well as regional level and uh, i'm also um, uh, i also uh, came to learn that we have to have a clear idea about the, the objective of the organization and uh, and we have to formulate uh, precisely uh, what do we want from the organization and how can we help like the next alumni and the prospective students and what they can expect like in their return, you know, after completing their graduation, how to support them. And uh, I hope also like we will grow into a bigger organization just like uh, in the Latin America, just like in uh, uh, so South Asia, Southeast Asia, that they're trying to come up with. So, uh, from my side, it, that is all. Thank you. Thank you, Merdan san. Now, Damira from Uzbekistan. 
Good morning, everyone. Give us a great chance to know about um, different uh, cultural activities, about our uh, alumni co-op activities all around the world in different countries. For me, each presentation was so inspiring, and uh, you know, I learned many things uh, from each of you. And I would like to say, like, I was really inspired by the Argentina and Bangladesh. They have uh, cultural clubs. <laughs> I never heard about that. And uh, you know, after coming back to Uzbekistan, I would like to propose, if it's possible the embassy of Japan and Uzbekistan to think about that, uh, you know, uh, opportunity to make a um, cultural club because we have so many students, we have so many people who are interested in studying Japan and also uh, <coughs> studying Japanese and, uh, you know, uh, Japanese culture. And we have some several um, uh, not clubs, it's like uh, courses uh, where they can learn Japanese, but not Japanese culture. So yes, um, that's really inspired me. And also, um, I was amazed by the work done by uh, the alumni club in Solomon Island. I think um, that's a huge support for students, what they are doing um, in terms of studying in Japan. And um, that's a great idea also to propose to our alumni club uh, if they will, you know, make, if they can arrange their time uh, to give the, you know, to make the kind of support uh, for students who want to study in Japan. Um, Thank you very much for all of you. I think, uh, I, I hope that, you know, um, all of us uh, uh, knew something um, uh, from this conference and make, you know, can apply that in a near future. Thank you very much. Thank you. From online participants, or joined by online participants, we would like to now have QI session. First, we would like to introduce the questions from the online participants. Italian living in Colombia, Cristiano Giordani has sent us a question. It is a bit of a deviation from what we have been discussing, but Now I'm Fufu, professor in physics in Colombia at University of Antioquia, Medellin, Colombia. My nationality is Italian. I think it would be great to have the opportunity to have interactions with Japanese professors to create collaboration and interchanges of uh, interchanges of students and professors. Hi. Thank you. Interaction with Japanese universities. This is not directly related to what you have just spoken, but from your personal experience and your experiences in exchanges with Japanese counterpart, can you make any input or comment on this statement? Please. in South America um, holds every year like um, a, universe, a Japanese university feria so um, you can participate in, uh, in that feria and try to get contact to many universities in Japan and um, there are also professors in Japan available in those ferias that will tell you uh, about what majors um, they have in their universities and how can you uh, try to apply for um, scholarships or for those programs. I think that will be the best way to uh, get in contact with Japanese universities. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? before we are working with the Sakura Science Exchange program that involves universities in, in, in Colombia. 
and his university is not has not been included yet. But uh, we plan to go to a second and, and fourth round of involvement, and uh, we we might work together the, with the association. This 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 program of Sakura Exchange program has been in in most of the cases in church of the association. So the uh, ACOGE has been working with the universities in Japan and working with the universities in Colombia to make those exchanges possible. And it involves professors, of course. So it might be a good idea to work together and try to involve a uh, university at the Antioquia, which is the uh, university that, made, that he mentioned, to see the possibilities to, to make exchange programs within the two, in, within two countries. Thank you for your input. Any comments from anyone? I just wanted to add that Japan Foundation, they also have several programs, and as I know, once in a year, uh, they open program for the researchers. Uh, if you want to conduct research uh, with Japanese sciences, uh, I think they have some information there. Uh, you can check in their website. Thank you. These are all valuable inputs and information. Any, anyone else? No? These questions and the answers to these questions can be quite valuable, especially in Colombia. There seems to be a very interesting program. And I hope that the Antioquia University can join the activities there by expanding the scope of exchanges between the two countries. Another comment from online participants, which will be read out by someone. There are two comments. One from Shajib in Sri Lanka. It has been a very rewarding experience with over 350 bilateral visits of students, staff, researchers, collaborations, and administrative staff training are uh, uh, very useful. Another comment from Mexico. Francisco in Mexico in English. As an additional comment about the academic collaboration, Mexico is already promoting the Japan, Mexico Japan Rector Summit to promote the, the approach between universities for academic and research collaboration. Uh, AMEF uh, Association of uh, Japan Alumni in Mexico is being invited to participate this year. And there are several members that know how to trigger these approaches. This might be an effort of government and the association and the embassy and consulates. Now, from the site, from the participants on site, any comments to these comments? If not, we would like to move on. Oh, there is one person, Lin Dong Sun. Um, thank you very much. Um, I think um, I would just like to uh, share some experiences that uh, we have in Solomon Islands. Um, some of the collaborations we have between um, professors uh, in Japan and uh, Solomon Islands is that uh, professors who did the PhD studies in Solomon Islands. They normally come back to Solomon Islands uh, frequently for, for research and collaboration with us. Uh, I'm currently working at the Solomon Island National University. So last year, we, we, we with the professors around universities in Japan, uh, led by one of the professors serving in Kyoto University, uh, we had a seminar uh, where we discussed about issues within the Pacific region and Japan as well. Uh, those are some of the collaborative activities uh, that we, we do. Uh, we work very closely with the Japanese embassy in Solomon Island as well. Um, um, so the embassy helped us to link back to the universities in um, um, Japan. So we are in a process of finalizing 
MOU with uh, Kyoto University. Um, and we are also in discussion with Kagoshima University as well, where I graduate from, um, because uh, we, we plan to establish center of excellence in fisheries um, because Pacific Ocean is so large and we want to utilize that as a unique opportunity for Japan and the uh, Solomon Islands to, um, to prosper in and as well as everybody in the world can also benefit out from that collaboration. So uh, you can start collaborating with um, uh, back to your prof uh, pro uh, professors who supervise you or your previous university, you can contact them, especially the office of the um, International Students Office, they can help you as well. So those are the things that I, could, I would like to add in, in this kind of uh, topic. Thank you so much. Uh, Lindon san, thank you very much. From uh, on on from the online audience, we have another comment. I'd like to have it read out. From Gabon, um, Natalie san sent in a comment or rather a question. I would like to know if we can have a space for publications where we can share research work between different association and Japan, uh, Japanese universities. Would anybody like to answer? Yes. Uh, so, Paula-san? I think that it's going to be, uh, it would be very interesting if we have a platform for all the alumni associations uh, together with uh, uh, maybe MAXT or Gaimo Show, uh, where we can concentrate because I think that the a number of articles would not be enough, for example, to have a, a scientific, uh, um, how do you say, uh, our own publication for each alumni association or for each region. Uh, the reason is very simple. It's because uh, usually when you are a researcher and you are inside the academic, uh, world, then you are searching also for points for your CV and to get uh, like very cited. Uh, this article usually goes for very famous places. So I don't think that many people would uh, like to publish their, um, their articles with us. But yes, I think that it's important if we open a space for those who would like to do Yes, Natalia-san, please. I have a question to Damira-san. Um, when you, you, you talked about um, there are people who are interested in Japanese and also the Japanese culture in Uzbekistan, what, what is is there a special reason why uh, you see this happening? For example, uh, let's say, is there a strong message that is being communicated from the Japanese government? And is that uh, stimulating people to have interest in Japan? Or is it because Uzbekistan's government or organization is disseminating information about Japan and Japanese culture, Japanese language, if there is any specific reason? Thank you for the question. Well, the diplomatic uh, relationship between Japan and Uzbekistan is not just uh, in the diplomatic area. Um, it's been 30 years and we have a very deep relationship. And also in Uzbekistan, yes, there are uh, people who became interested in learning the Japanese language. There may be many reasons. Um, animation, manga could have been the trigger point to start um, researching about Japan. Um, there are students like that. And also the embassy um, has a lot of events where they introduce Japanese culture 
so even if somebody um, has never heard about Japanese language, Japanese culture, but um, through these events uh, that people visit with their children may start to get interested in Japan, want to travel to Japan. Um, the travelers to Japan is on the increase recently. So I think there are several different patterns uh, where people become interested in um, Japan. And there are Japanese companies that made entrance into Uzbekistan. So there are people who want to work in these Japanese companies and they start to understand that they may need to learn the Japanese language. And also there are people who have friends or colleagues who are studying in Japan. And that may have uh, started to uh, started them to get interested in getting education in Japan as well. So there are um, more and more students who are interested in learning the Japanese language. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, any other questions, comments about the presentations that we've heard? If not, we'd like to move on to the next group, which is um, first from Australia, Jason San, New Zealand, Paul San, Papua New Guinea, Ambo San, and from the Solomon Islands, Lindon San. We will first hear from these four. And after we've heard uh, from the four people, we will have a Q&A session. So Jason San, please. my remarks in, into two parts. One is uh, kind of my general impressions uh, gained throughout our time together, and the second is uh, So, two parts. Uh, so, I, I've been uh, kind of in awe, surrounded uh, by all of, all of you, um, especially when I, when I think that Everyone here has a, a very busy professional life uh, that, that you're leading, um, in addition to your personal lives, of course. Uh, nonetheless, nonetheless, everyone is here and everyone is bringing to this occasion um, all of this wonderful energy. And something that I was very happy to hear uh, is that our time, you know, is, is, is that, sorry, is that uh, this, this is all being driven by uh, a sense of, of, of dedication and appreciation toward Japan. And this sentiment was shared by a number of people yesterday. Um, and it's amazing to, to be surrounded by people who have this same sentiment that I have. Um, I know that our time together uh, here is not yet over, but please allow me uh, just to say that it has been uh, an honor to have been given this opportunity uh, by the Japanese government. You keep giving us these wonderful opportunities. You've given us scholarships. You've allowed us to uh, be educated at Japanese institutions, which has fundamentally changed our lives. And you've brought us here uh, and given us this wonderful opportunity to uh, to give back, uh, which is something that we all want to do. So that is an honor, but it has also been an honor to, uh, to be able to share this time uh, with everyone here. Uh, I feel like I can leave with a sense of what we would like to accomplish uh, on a more uh, local level. Um, having said that, uh, and this is connected to our exchange session yesterday, uh, which, which we'll have a chance to talk a bit about uh, you know, later, I suppose. Um, and now I'd like to change uh, into Japanese. Uh, but this was uh, quite a significant um, exchange session. Uh, we had an Oceania um, exchange session last year. But of course, uh, just having an, an event once is not enough. It's just uh, uh, so we'd like to have a second Oceania online exchange. Um, if we can have a, another opportunity for that. 
Um, so you may be a part of the Oceania group, but there were people who were not able to come to this fourth Japan alumni conference. So if there could be a second Oceania online exchange, we will be able to share what we learned at this conference with our other Oceanian friends. So I do hope that uh, you, we can have that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Jason, for your input. The second point you made, the request The first exchange session has, I was able to participate in part of the exchange session. And I'm very pleased to know that you're interested in participating in the second exchange session. In each region, as it has been discussed yesterday, exchange sessions or a conference like this should be able to be held. And that is our hope in different ways to the regions of the Pacific and to Latin America. We have been working together with them. If you are interested in having such an exchange session again, we are happy to provide support to fulfill your wish. But in the long run, I want you to be autonomously available and capable of holding such an event with your ownership and initiative. And that, I think, is an ultimate goal, which is very important. So independent organization of regional alumni is an ultimate goal. And to that end, we are happy to provide more support. Regional activities or regional plans may be different from one region to another. Exchange sessions and conferences are encouraged to be held. Governmental support should not necessarily be a prerequisite in terms of sustainability. So in order to make it a sustainable process, please Try to think about what you want to do by the region and make a proposal to which we can provide support wherever possible and relevant. And that, I hope, will make it possible to make the, such program more sustainable. Look forward to having more discussion on this topic. Next. Paul San from New Zealand. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. First, allow me to speak in Japanese, then switching to English in the second half of my statement. First, the fourth Japan Alumni Association has been a wonderful opportunity. I'm very happy that I was invited to this. Having listened to all the presentations, I was able to learn a lot with lots of good ideas. So I'm more highly inspired thanks to all those presentations. Wonderful ideas I learned include the ways to attract stronger candidates by visiting high schools. An Auckland chapter organization can also think about the refreshing of the staff member as well. But most importantly, having listened to your presentations, many of you are working as volunteers, volunteering your time and skills so these are the things that I should be reflecting when I am managing the chapter back home. I will be retiring soon. Auckland chapter of Japan Alumni Association. I look forward to make whatever humble contributions I can make for the association.
one of the things that I feel strongly uh, has, has uh, I feel other people have the same feeling. And, and for me, uh, a lot of what is really good in my life came from my experiences in Japan. And, uh, and in speaking to others over the last few days, I think many of us uh, feel the same thing. We are really honored uh, to have had the opportunity to, uh, to study and learn in Japan. Um, you know, going forward, I think the challenge for us in our, in our countries is to, to ensure that we get the top quality potential students uh, in our countries to apply for the scholarships. Um, part of that is the awareness and the PR things we've talked about. And part of that is explaining, finding a way to explain uh, to um, the young people in our countries that, that you know, Japan is, uh, it's not just it's not just cool Japan. Cool Japan is, is, is very cool and uh, young people love that, but there are really, truly great opportunities here for careers and, and, and life and for educational learning. Um, so I think uh, the, that I'll, I'll go back and I'm very keen to speak to the, uh, the people at the Consul General in Auckland and try and, um, and do what I can do to, to help and, and everyone's um, enthusiasm uh, has really inspired me. So I'm very grateful for that. So thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation to, to come here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Next, from Papua New Guinea, Ombosan, please. Uh, what I could say was, uh, is that, uh, you know, we coming and attending this uh, fourth uh, uh, Japan Alumni Association is, you know, is, is really, you know, worthy. Uh, I know we've had the, we've had the uh, first, second, and then the third was on uh, online uh, presentation because of the uh, COVID, but uh, lucky that this time, you know, we had this, uh, uh, the fourth one, the third one was, yes, of course, uh, presentation, and then this fourth one on a live presentation inviting 14 countries and we're coming here and we're discussing our uh, activities that we uh, have uh, are implementing in our respective uh, Dosokai's uh, alumni associations in our countries. It's, you know, it's really good to uh, present and uh, hear about. Huh? It's very interesting and it's really worthy. It's really worthy that uh, some of these uh, activities that we are implementing are the same uh, or some of them are more or less the same, or some of them are completely new altogether. And uh, this is uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, good for us to know that, and that uh, we can uh, uh, implement this when we get back home uh, to our respective uh, associations and then implement them. And uh, one of them that I can, you know, really think of right now is uh, from uh, Dr. Alam's, uh, you know, uh, Bangladeshi uh, a speech contest. Of course, you know, we're having a speech contest, a Japanese speech contest in our respective countries, but we never thought about speech contest in our own respective languages to the living, you know, to the Japanese community living in our respective uh, countries. And uh, I'm looking forward for that. Yeah. Well, when I get back home, probably give a speech contest to the Japanese living in my country in, in, uh, in English. And uh, of course, in uh, uh, talk uh, pidgin uh, or talk pidgin, where this is a Creole, right? Creole. If I can speak my pidgin in uh, Papua New Guinea, if I go to uh, Equatorial Guinea, we can understand each other. Uh, or somewhere in the Caribbean, and of course, uh, Solomon Islands also, they speak uh, talk pidgin, and uh, in Vanuatu, they call it uh, Bislama, but it's a, a, a dialect of the uh, talk pidgin, so we can. Uh, give a speech contest to the Japanese community living there in this opposition and see how uh, well they can uh, speak our language. Of course, we will also be participating in our Japanese language uh, speech contests as well. And uh, going on down the line, yes, uh, more or less it has been said, but uh, I'd like to mention it again is that we're doing this uh, thing from uh, heart to heart uh, during, you know, working uh, assisting in volunteerism and this is really good sometimes yes we come and have you know headaches and so forth 
But at the back of our minds, yes, we're doing these activities through volunteerism. And it is, as we, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, you know, giving back to Japan, saying thank you to Japan for what you have done in our respective years, you know, at our respective universities, that we have come and uh, lived in this country and uh, learned a lot from uh, Japan, both inside the classroom and outside the classroom. And uh, it was all under your people's uh, expense. And uh, when we get back to our countries, we would like to say thank you by implementing our Dosoka activities and uh, appreciating what you have given to us. So, but uh, yes, some of us, most of us, we're doing from on that level, and we would like to give all our time and effort to it. But of course, you must also bear in mind that uh, because of some, uh, you know, uh, for our own, you know, some small, you know, uh, hiccups, uh, headaches, like, you know, working out of the region, communication problems, so forth, gives us the hindrance where we do not participate. But majority of us would like to uh, assist along. And uh, finally, of course, you know, to what uh, uh, we can you know, like to say, ask or so, of course, uh, Mr. Jason has already mentioned about our Pacific uh, uh, you know, online uh, presentation. But going back to our respective uh, uh, associations, as I have mentioned in my uh, presentation yesterday, is on the, uh, item number two, and I've got um, bullet points uh, five, seven, and eight, which I have uh, mentioned in there. So uh, if you can look into, and uh, I do not expect you to come, let's say, you know, 100% to. <laughs> assisting on that, but to some level, to some uh, standard. Of course, that doesn't mean that I will be also be asking, you know, assistance from my, my, my home country as well, too. I have to ask my country to help myself. Yeah. And that is all I have to present, and I'd like to thank you all for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, then from the Solomon Islands, Dindon san, please. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first, uh, I would like to say thank you to the Minister of Foreign Affairs for this opportunity for to bringing me all the way from Solomon Islands to Japan uh, to, to be re reunited after two years and a half, um, I leave Japan. I left Japan and went back to Solomon Islands. And it's really nice to be back here in Japan. Um, I think um, um, I spent almost like uh, a decade long years in Japan. Um, it really molded me into someone, um, someone special, I could say. Uh, that I can be able to contribute or give back to the people in Solomon Islands as well. Um, so thank you so much for this opportunity to come over and sit down here and we discuss as well. Um, I would like to thank all of you, my colleagues here from different countries around the world. Um, you shared your experiences. Uh, I really learned a lot. I really learned a lot. Um, of course, we have our own challenges, but one thing that I notice is that we have the similar uh, common denominator where I can say that, um, like we are, we want to promote Japan in the, in the global level as well, and at the same time, uh, I could say that it's a kind of a way of uh, bringing peace to the world as well, and I think I really like that. Uh, um, what is it, the the energy all of us have? It's really motivating for me, um, especially for the regions that you already have and alumni, which is cross boundary, I could say, like India and others. Um, I think I have, I have learned a lot from you guys. Uh, this will help, especially uh, for us in Solomon Islands and Pacific as well, that we can also adopt. Uh, we have our challenges as well. Um, for us in the Pacific, uh, we can easily relate to Japan as well because uh, we are islands surrounded by ocean. So we can, the, the problems we have also, Japan also have the, those problems as well. Um, so thank you so much for all the contributions uh, you shared. I have learned a lot from you all. Um, talking about the future, um, I think um, 
the alumni association in Solomon Islands uh, for the ex, ex um, Japan scholars. Um, there is a lot that we can do as well. Um, at the moment, we only focus um, on education. Our strength is on education at the moment. Um, uh, because we, we uh, what is it, uh, we, we see that this is one of the area that is easy to um, influence the society because through the ed education. Uh, so we target the university at the moment. We target the schools because the future of the country in Solomon Islands is in high schools. So if we instill values about Japan, the importance of Japan, uh, the Im importance of uh, global citizens that can able to live peacefully like uh, other countries, um, it's in the high school as well. And for Solomon Islands, we also understand that the, the, the brain trust of Solomon Islands is at the university as well. So if we're able to influence at that level, um, that can help uh, to make uh, collaborations between Japan and Solomon Islands as well. So a lot of good things uh, can be said at, um, at that level. Also in people-to-people -people level, we can also have uh, a ways to also dialogue as well or develop as well. Uh, I was really, uh, what is it, um, um, especially from the uh, talk given by Papua New Guinea friend here, um, that they usually collect uh, the remain of uh, Japanese soldiers fallen during the World War II. Um, in Solomon Islands, we also have that kind of association as well. Um, but we, we, we do it, um, in some, some, some of my friends, they do it in their own accords, meaning to say that they, they feel like this is the, um, a, a way that they should give back to Japan. <coughs> So they have been doing that in, in their own ways, at their own, uh, what is it, uh, capacity and at own resources as well. So it's very, very encouraging. Um, and I have learned a lot from uh, Mr. Ombosan about how he also conduct his um, uh, association in Papua New Guinea as well. Um, I think for me, um, I, the, the interest, uh, what is it, the interest to, to move uh, the alumni association in Solomon Islands become re-emphasized re or strengthened here. Um, so after going back to Solomon Islands, I will go back to the Japan embassy in Solomon Islands and discuss with the staff there uh, how we can, and then I might call the, the members as well and we can able to plan how we should do our activities for this year and as well as next year. I think this is very, very important for to maintain uh, the work that we have been uh, uh, initiated throughout the years. I think that's all from me. Thank you so much. Hey, Lindon San, thank you very much. So we would like to take a look at some comments, questions coming in online first. From Gabon, and Natalie San has sent a question to Ombo San. And I'll read it out in English. I like the, the idea of uh, speech context in Japanese and another language as well. But here is my question is in such case, do the speech context, maybe a theme or topic, uh, remain a uh, focus on culture? What about speech context? So what, what, what could be the topic of speech context? Uh, thank you. Thank you for your uh, question from uh, Gabon. And uh, yes, uh, the topic uh, will be, uh, you know, um, yeah, several points would be, uh, you know, topic points huh, will be uh, raised, put up. Uh, I cannot do it, you know, alone by myself, by, but uh, we have uh, coordinators, we will put the questions up. And of course, it has to be uh, realistic, reasonable, uh, relevant uh, questions. Uh, it can be, rela you know, of course, related to uh, the, uh, the top piece in, uh, in PNG, because uh, uh, that's what she's asking for. Yeah. So, and uh, uh, 
of course, we want to know you know the, the uh, how how uh, how good uh, these you know Japanese uh, speakers would be. So it, it it will vary from you know from culture or from the language or you know uh, general. It can be on uh, business related questions also. So it can be on any point as long as it's relevant and then the speakers can be able to present themselves in the given time. Yeah. I hope I answer that question. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. So, um, any questions from the floor here on site? Ashok-san? It's in continuation of uh, the question earlier asked about the topic of the speech contest. I think the topic uh, for the last 30 years we have been conducting, basically we want to see, uh, uh, we want to encourage people to express their own thoughts in Japanese. So we say, you just speak your own thoughts, whatever you wish to speak in Japanese, except politics and religion. So we leave the topic open to the individual because then his own ex feelings can be expressed better. So that is what our experience is. Don't fix the topic. Thank you. Hi, uh, Luisa -san, Luisa -san? Well, I have still a question and a comment if it is okay because yesterday there was no time so I wanted to ask Salomon Allen about the project of, I mean, the point of dispatching information back to all education authorities and schools. Because, yeah, I just was interested in knowing. So it seems like the schools help you to disseminate the information. So I would like to know more about how this is done. Like, do they inform the students directly? Do they make like a a session especially for that or in the classrooms and then i also would like to comment about the interest of jason in starting like an integration in your region so ameg would be very happy to help you with the process because we started it in latin america so we could share with you like the steps that we follow and why it's needed like in terms of materials and also of course in human resources and i mean our general guideline is in spanish but we can start working in an english version so we share it with you and i think that to, to have an english version will be yeah we, we could help more people outside Latin America, so we could start doing that. And we also offer to have like an online session, you know, for questions and, 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 and of course you will need to adapt everything to your conditions and situation, but if it is helpful for you, we are more than happy to, to help you in this process. That would be absolutely wonderful. Um, we, we had you in mind uh, when I think when we were discussing this, uh, but knowing how much you're doing, especially knowing how much your communications team is doing, we were a bit hesitant to, uh, <laughs> to ask. So we very much appreciate your offering that and we, uh, we will take you up on that offer um, as long as we're not you know, being too burdensome in asking you, you know, to, for translations of documents, et cetera, et cetera. It's okay. It, okay. We are very happy to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. So, uh, um, thank you very much, uh, Luisa, for your question. Um, yeah, for, for Solomon Islands, um, what the alumni association uh, did was that we we try to we recognize uh, the education authorities in Solomon Islands. Schools in Solomon Islands are operated by authorities. So 
like national schools, it's operated by the national government. Uh, there are schools that are operated by provincial government as well. They have their own education authorities as well. Uh, even the church, um, like Anglicans, Catholic, uh, Seventh-day Adventists, they run church, uh, school in Solomon Islands as well. And then we have the private. They also run schools as well. So we use those authorities, um, give them the information, and because they have the channel to disseminate all this information to their schools. So that's how we, 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 we disseminate those information. So we do it prior to the, um, when, when, when we launch, or when the scholarship or whatever in, information has been launched, um, we also go there and give those information and they will help us to disseminate because we don't have the resources to go to the provinces. Uh, Solomon Island is scattered. So we use those channel to assist us to disseminate the information. Thank you so much. Okay. Questions on Thank you very much. Okay, actually, uh, in speech contest, we see two things. One thing is, is the uh, capability uh, or ability to speak in Japanese language. And another thing, actually, we what is the language? Language is nothing but uh, the, uh, use some meaningful words. So if somebody knows the language of some country or someone, then they're easy to understand the uh, their culture and activities and other activities as well. But uh, in for Bangladeshis, the, the students were really interested to study in Japan. So if we, we know the level of uh, the, their uh, um, that means speaking ability in Japanese, that is the main one. Uh, what they learned by seeing the Japanese film, drama, manga, this and this and that. In, on the on other hand, when we uh, um, arrange the speech contest, that means Bengali speech contest for Japanese, in the same way, we see the, the, that their communication level with the root level people, mm -hmm. the, how they are going their activities, because most of the Japanese are doing as a voluntary work. So this is the way we do the, our activities. Thank you very much. Hi, arigatou gozaimashita. Uh, Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Um, just on the, the point about communication in schools, um, I'm not sure about other countries, but I'm pretty sure in Western countries they all have what they call career guidance counsellors. So these are people who work in schools whose job it is to help the students decide uh, what jobs they will have or what careers they will follow. And um, uh, Communicating with those people and building relationships with those people uh, can be a very powerful way to uh, to get um, uh, students to be, uh, be be made aware of opportunities um, uh, to go to university or to study overseas. So, just wanted to say yeah, thank you very much. Hi, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? If not, let's move on to the next segment. We will next be hearing from participants from the North America, Natalia from Canada and John from the US. Starting off with Natalia from Canada, floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I would like to express my heartfelt appreciation for MOFA and its staff for providing us with such a fulfilling and rewarding opportunity to learn. And needless to say, from around the world, we have been able to meet fellow alumni. Knowing you and meeting you all is something that is quite valuable. My experience in Japan At Gakuke, Tokyo Gakuke University, there was a section for international students. And I feel the same way as if I am visiting the section of international students at Tokyo Gakuge University. This momentum needs to be capitalized on. Going back to Canada, I hope to work harder, especially towards a higher level of 
independence of the alumni association, laying out stronger foundation, so that we can have a stronger organization. And I look forward to working towards that end. So my takeaways include the following. As many of you have pointed out, I think it is important to enhance ties with high school students. The state of Quebec, it is a Franco state in Canada, has a unique educational system. So CEGEP is an education institution where students will first have to um, study. But in Quebec, it's not just high schools, but um, CEGEP College um, is an area that we would like to reach out to. Uh, I believe that that would be effective. And another um, important learning for me is the use of social media to disseminate information. Um, so far, we have been focusing on email and also a private page on Facebook. Uh, those were the only methods that we were using, but I heard about your use of um, Instagram and even TikTok in certain countries. So yes, I'd like to um, learn in, in using these as well. Now, there are four organizations in Canada um, and collaborating uh, with these organizations was lacking so far in Canada. So I hope that we can get closer uh, and establish a relationship of cooperation. So after going back to Canada, I would like to share my learning with my colleagues. And also I would like to make a report to the Consulate General. And I would, I'm not going to say sayonara, goodbye, after this event is over. I do hope to keep in contact with all of you. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, John San, please. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It was a very stimulating three days where I was able to feel a lot and reflect a lot. I would like to use English in my presentation. It's so stimulating to be with so many of you from so many different countries and continents and hear about your MEX dollar networks. And it's made me wonder, why is the U.S. behind your countries? This is our first time participating. And, um, you know, the U.S.-Japan alliance is so important, right, in, in the world, in Asia, in the United States. And you would think we would have had a network for a long time that's uh, already developed. And I think part of it is that we have a really vast array of uh, Japan specialists, people from Japan. We have 500,000 Japanese living in the United States. You know, born in Japan, we have a million Japanese Americans, 30 million Asian Americans. It's a very complex environment, people who specialize in business, the military, diplomacy, education. And so it's um, there, there are many different networks, right, for us to uh, um, plug into, but also uh, carve our own um, area. And I think that most MEX scholars in the United States really are grateful to Japan, the government of Japan, the people of Japan, for their uh, learning experience, their good experience, their education here. And they do want to both pay back and pay forward to other Americans who will have that experience. And, and we are definitely the Shinichiha, right, along with many other people. And, um, and yet it's not the mainstream, you know, the uh, Americans who are focused on Europe or Anglo-American world are, are certainly perhaps still dominant and, and Japan is, is, is different. In fact, I think even though the U.S. is so multicultural, Japan plays a really important role for Americans in 
appreciating different cultures, histories, and values, and, and balancing some of what I see as a kind of uh, extremism in the USA. In fact, uh, while Japan and the US both uh, value liberal democracy, it is eroding, right? And it's so important for us to understand the rest of the world. And I think Japan is a good portal or gateway to that, to Asia in particular, um, Asia, East Asia, but the non-Western world as well. And that to me is what makes Americans being educated in Japan and living in Japan so valuable. And um, in my case, so I'm an education specialist, so I pick up on that maybe more than other things like technology or development or business. And uh, the briefings on Monday were so interesting to me from MEXT and JASO and, and Japan Foundation. I really think the government of Japan's goal to globalize its education even more than, uh, you know, uh, in the past decade, there were lots of initiatives and goals, but it seems more serious right now. And um, I think there's a lot of opportunity to do research and collaborate. Um, uh, I would like to do that personally, but also if more Japanese students come to America, I want to help them through our networks, help them settle in and have a good experience there. Same with the Americans who will come here. Uh, I have a Japan adjacent career, so I'm not, you know, a specialist in it. And in some ways that's good. I can be neutral. I can be a, just a mentor and a guide. I want to help the next generation of uh, Japan specialists or just people interested in Japan um, continue these networks, although I'm so impressed by uh, Ashok and um, Tony. Uh, maybe I'll do this until I'm 80 or something too, so I've got a, a maybe 20 or more years. Uh, I uh, do think that having Japan, the government of Japan succeed in this effort is really important for the U.S. as well in its own diplomatic goals. And um, so when uh, the Japanese government is helping uh, your countries, you know, with um, education and development and technology transfer, um, it's also a win-win a for the United States, given how important our relationship is. So uh, these are things I will take back to, you know, networks in Washington, D.C. and the United States uh, about this. Uh, so thank you very much. Hi. John, -san, thank you very much. So Natalia San and John San, we have heard from the two. So any questions uh, from the floor, please? Questions or comments, please? Ashok-san, please. John, thank you very much for this um, dimension which you added, which was missing so far in our discussions. I think we, uh, for many of us, Japan is so special, not in terms of only bilateral relation between India and Japan, but I think in terms of, as you rightly said, John, uh, a connecting link between the West and the East is such a strong connecting link. And we are fortunate that we have been given opportunity of acquiring a deeper understanding of this country. All of us, especially in the Asian region, speak English. So, inherently, we have been tuned through the language to the West a lot. So, we are very few precious people, if I may myself say that, who have the background of the West from the language English. And we have been given an opportunity of understanding Japan. So, this bridge, as you mentioned, John, I think needs to be consciously cultivated. We, I mean, it's happening here, but I think we should recognize that this is happening and we should build on it. So thanks very much, John. It's been a very perceptive uh, intervention from you. Thank you. Hi, Thank you very much for that. Any other questions, comments? Ah, yes. I of Japan articulates that kind of strategy. I mean, it, it, 
I don't want to uh, tie it to military and things like that, but um, I really want, um, Japan is a great intermediary or bridge among different parts of the world. And um, uh, so it's, I, I think it's really valuable uh, all around. And uh, if there's a way to, like, if you can make clear the role of Americans in supporting a network that is very global and can help um, human development around the world, not, not military power, not economic business power, but human development. Uh, it would, decided to wear my SDG pin because I really think the social development goals that the Japanese government and the United Nations support are, are really valuable and in the United States, they're not thought about or recognized as much. So anyway, I wanted to say that. はい、ありがとうございました。はい、ナタリアさんお願いします。Thank you, Natalia. Then, I just like to. As former students in Japan, we are also maybe agent is not a good word, but we are those people who can also contribute a lot, not only for promoting scholarships and programs, but also for building very good bilateral relationship at our level in our. Small steps in our everyday life, even when we are interpreting, translating, or talking to our friends, uh, or at our workplace, uh, we are all um, um, conveying this message from uh, from our perspective, but from from Japan as uh, as passionate lovers of Japan, right? So I think we have this mission. We have to be conscious about that. Hi, thank you. Thank you. Christian? Yes, I would like to add a comment about education in primary and secondary school. Um, I think we, we are all uh, former students of the um, uh, research student program, but we don't have to forget that we have also former students of the teacher training program. I don't know if that program exists in your countries, but those, uh, those people that come in Japan uh, for studying about education in Japan, they are obliged to go back to their own country. They cannot stay in Japan. They are obliged to go back to work at primary and secondary schools. So it's really important that we as uh, alumni associations stay in contact with them because they are working at schools. And they are spreading Japanese culture in those schools. And some of them work in the capital, some others work in rural areas. So that it's also a way to try to spread the programs or spread uh, Japanese culture in the schools through them. We don't have to forget about them. はい、ありがとうございました。Thank you for your input. Then, moving on to the last segment of this recapping section. Christian from Argentina and Paula from Brazil and Mauricio from Colombia and Luisa from Mexico will be talking, starting with Christian from Argentina. Good morning, everyone. First, on this occasion, I would like to express my heartfelt appreciation to MOFA and its staff for organizing such a wonderful Japan alumni conference. Through this conference, I have been able to be exposed to all the presentations by fellow alumni, Mexico's presentation and Colombia's presentation or Brazil's presentation on their management and activities and outcomes were quite informative and educational. Further, regional session also allowed us to exchange views in a meaningful manner. Alumni associations initiatives and challenges are quite similar. But within Latin America, by different parts of the Latin America due to cultural, political, or academic relations with Japan may be different. That means that the challenges 
faced by each regional chapter may not necessarily be identical. Argentina is a country that is farthest away from Japan, and it is facing the it is not facing the Pacific. We have been watching Europe rather than Asia, and we also do have a mountain ridges, and behind it is Japan, and that is why Japan is still an exotic country, a very interesting tourism destination, but that is often the limitation of the level of interest among Argentina problem. Similar attitudes can be found in regional or educational authorities. And that is one of the reasons that the alumni are engaged in careers that are not necessarily strongly connected to Japan, to our shame. But the Japanese community in Argentina and bilateral relations being enabled by the alumni association are working hard to revitalize people's interest in this country. Having learned from the and inspired by the in presentations, I am ready to take on a new challenge to further revitalize the relations. Mexican and Colombian associations Latin American meeting was quite fruitful. Argentina Association is yet to organize such an event, but that our participation in that event was quite meaningful because in order to attract possible candidates, inter-associational collaboration was necessary and working with Mexico and Colombia I have, we have been able to make a humble contribution to the Latin American conference. Next year or the year after next year, we will do our best we can to hopefully organize one of these Latin American conference in the near future. Thank you. From Brazil, Paula. So I would like to start thanking for Japan, for the people of Japan, the, uh, specifically the taxpayers, for all these opportunity that we have been given uh, from the starting of the scholarship uh, that we we got right for the research scholarship until now and this event. Uh, and it's very important to uh, have these on-site meetings. Uh, because uh, it helps establishing this people-to-people -people relation. And it's not only about these uh, meetings that we are recording here, also the chats that we have outside and in the parallel chats, they are very enriching also. So I got to learn uh, closer from uh, my colleagues here that uh, in the importance of and, and how, how really strong it is uh, the building of relations uh, people or, or, um, among people uh, from, uh, for example, some testimonials of colleagues in laboratories that were working and studying together. Meanwhile, uh, their countries were in war one against the other. So this is so important to uh, promote the peace and understanding. And especially from Japan, what we can get from it is that we can learn from everybody, from every country, and uh, incorporate some uh, knowledge and some behaviors and some values, uh, but without having to give up your kernel. So Japanese are very special for not giving up their kernel, although they incorporate, for example, hambago, hambaga, <laughs> and so on in so many ways. And this is so, so, so beautiful. Um, 
still about the gains from these experiences uh, with scholarship uh, and learning values. Um, in some abstract terms, if, uh, you, if we consider that we applied for scholarship uh, here in Japan, it's because we believed that it somehow would put like push us uh, upper, bring us upper. So I would like to quote Leonardo da Vinci uh, with some very special words. Uh, he who has once in the heights will now go around the world looking up at the sky, wishing to return to it. So what, while we are uh, doing our activities back in our countries, uh, it's l as like we were um, kind of uh, reviving some experiences that we had here and sharing all this knowledge so that, uh, for example, the next uh, exchange students would be able to take even more from that. So uh, this is a very strong motivation that I carry with myself and I would like to share uh, with you. And I believe that most of us uh, feel the same way. Uh, about, about some practical things now, uh, I would like to, to recover the comments, comments about the, the online participant about uh, publishing the article, right? So uh, I would like Jason Sun make uh, just extend a bit uh, the request, maybe. Uh, we, if we could ask uh, you to uh, provide a platform where we can uh, publish these articles, uh, the, uh, the alumni articles about relationship between countries, not only alumni, right? Uh, the specialists, uh, and also through this platform to have uh, explicit links to our associations, institutionality. Uh, because uh, I think that this background of having explicit link between uh, Guy Mosho and Max and our associations would give us some, um, I would say, kind of political influence and power in our society so that we could act uh, more strongly in some areas. Um, and particularly about uh, what I learned from uh, our sessions, uh, also with uh, Japan Foundation and with Max and uh, Gaimo Show. Uh, I think that it was very important to have updated this notion of the Japanese agenda that not only to have the students uh, constructing bridges between the countries, but now uh, there is this interest to have the excellent students uh, work here. So uh, I understand that we will have some support to uh, try to find this uh, way for them to uh, be allocated in the Japanese market after conclusion of their scholarship. Uh, back to Brazil, I feel uh, very relieved to learn from uh, several colleagues that we are not alone in the situation of having few active members. Uh, and also together with that, I was very happy to learn from Mexico uh, that uh, we, we still have some uh, hints to follow uh, to convert this number to a bigger number so that people don't get overburned. So this is very important because not getting overburned allows us to take part in more activities and more collaborations and so on, especially in Latin America, uh, where we have a closer relation. And um, I think that uh, uh, for my association, I think that the first steps should be uh, to think uh, in the structure. Uh, so to gather more youth 
we should try to promote more youth-related cultural events and work together with the embassy to sow the seed of motivation to engage in the alumni association after scholarship by uh, setting up those meetings just before the exchange students leave to Japan so that we already create this relationship before they even start the exchange. And uh, from Argentina, Bangladesh, Solomon uh, Islands and other uh, colleagues to reach, for, to reach further and to early uh, grades of students uh, and try to help them with study groups in preparation for the selection tests that we uh, we agreed they are very different from uh, the our systems, especially in math. That was the the discussion in the previous sections. So uh, we could help this preparation, and uh, since we approach the the students in high school or fundamental school they will have the time to uh, bring some maturity to that choice of applying for japan and also to prepare better themselves so that uh, they can make it at the uh, the selection test so thank you very much i have learned a lot and i'm very thankful for this opportunity Thank you very much. Uh, so, Mauricio san from Colombia, please. Thank you. Well, I want to join everybody in thanking the Minister of Foreign Education, Foreign Education, in their work creating these links between the associations, global associations. Uh, that's very helpful. Uh, we are getting a lot of insights to go back home and apply them in growing our, our own associations, and, and that is very important for us. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I have some commitments to go back home. One of them is, um, together with AMEG, to try to grow and to continue with the momentum we have. You mentioned the momentum, Natalia, and that's very important. We do have a momentum right now, uh, especially in Latin America because we had just one month ago the, the, the second forum and having this activity just one month after uh, creates a sort of energy around it and we need to keep working on that so that we continue with this with this purpose and and and, and support the other com countries that are going to help this this um, this uh, third forum um, and that's one commitment we do have to uh, follow. Uh, we also have uh, learned from every every uh, experience you have and the problems you have that are very very similar to what we have back in Colombia. Uh, we will expect to have a, a strategy around involving more people in the work of the association. Uh, and uh, and also uh, involve uh, generational change that is something that is going to help us to create more momentum in our in activities um, and I have to say also uh, we will not lower our hands in working in inclusion uh, this is something very important for us in, and if, if we see here now we are more than 20 people are only or women and that's that's not the world uh, the world is different so we I think we have to keep working on that and we are we will not lower our hands in this commitment back home. And I want to appreciate, I want to say my, um, give my appreciation for all of you. Uh, we learned a lot of things from every one of you, and I will try to bring all those knowledge and experiences and, and sentiments back home. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, lastly, but not least, Luisa from Mexico, please. Good morning, everyone. Well, first, I also want to thank the Japanese government and MOF especially. Uh, from me and also from the whole organization in Mexico for giving us the opportunity to be here. Uh, sharing ideas, experiences, and learning a lot from other associations around the world. But also, 
learning from the Japanese government. I particularly found extremely helpful the brief sessions with JASO, MOFA, and MEXT. First, because it is very important for us to be informed about the different policies so we can be aligned with them and try to help to the extent of our uh, efforts and experience, but try to help from our different countries to achieve those uh, goals. But also it was very, for me, very warm to see how passionate every presenter was about their work and how much they want really to help us, to help us and to help former students and to help students who are coming to Japan to give them the resources and make their experience more enjoyable and also easier. And also it was very rewarding that they are so aware about many projects that we have in Mexico with Japan Foundation or JASO. So yeah, thank you very much. I, I really think that session was extremely helpful for all of us. And about all what we have as an association and me, what we got from these two very intense days of uh, exchanging ideas. Well, well, first, I would like to recognize and validate the work that has been done for three decades in Mexico, right, by all our senpai, especially the work done during the generational transition in the last 10 years, that we can now see that after many adaptations and struggles, seems to be going well and for better. In these two days, we could reaffirm how important it is to let young lead leaders to manage with all their energy and fresh ideas, the, the projects that we have. But also it is very important for our senior leaders to be honored by listening to their advices and experiences. And in general, to value all our members across generations and of, of course, as also Mauricio said, across genders, right, between male and female members that integrate our associations. Because one of our goals is to let them all shine. Because if they all shine, our association is gonna be thriving with them too. We still, as an association, of course, have many challenges. Inside our organization, we need better strategies to increase the number of active members who contribute with their time and knowledge with the organization. And I think this challenge was raised by many other participants. Paula also mentioned this. And actually, yesterday, Christian shared with us, Christian for Argentina shared with us some ideas of what activities in, they have done in Argentina to increase the number of members who are actually participating and how to get some budget from the Japanese embassy. It was his example because yeah, I think also our associations struggle not just with doing activities, but with getting the budget to actually be able to manage those activities. So it was pretty helpful. And we also need to work in promoting Japanese universities and research activities in Japan, in Latin America. Uh, so the knowledge and work of our former students is re recognized and looked at, right? <laughs> By other stakeholders who are not necessarily involved in the relation between Mexico and Japan. So I think this is also a challenge that we share with other countries in Latin America that might be not that important in Asia, because I think in Asia, Japanese universities and research efforts are very known already and very famous. But that we still have to work a lot and to put together efforts so they are better known in our region. Also, the relation between Mexico and Japan keeps deepening, right? Now there are around 100 1,200 Japanese companies in Mexico, and the number is growing. 
And also Japan is our second partner for agricultural products to export a lot to Japan. So the role of AMEG is becoming more and more vital to open opportunities for our members and also for the Mexican society in general. Also, it is very important for Japanese stakeholders who are interested in having a deeper understanding of the Mexican society. So with all these challenges that we have ahead, we are always happy to share materials, ideas, practices, but most important, we would like to hear or keep hearing your voices, your concerns, and the key practices that you think that can help us to become a more effective and sustainable association. So in order to keep moving forward, we appreciate also the goodwill coming from all of you, especially from our colleagues from Latin America. Our association in Mexico has reached an important level of autonomy. And we think that many of our members already know how to navigate different layers of the cultural diplomacy between Mexico and Japan. And this experience can be also shared with other countries in Latin America. But of course, we still have a lot to learn. We admire the example of the years of integration from ASEAN countries, for example, because they have a way more experience than us in that aspect. And of course, certain practices from other associations that we did not think about before and that we also learned from these uh, sessions. But in behalf of the association, I can say that we keep finding reasons, right, to, to keep striving for more. And we also feel a lot of responsibility to support our fellows in Latin America that actually are willing or were willing already, like Colombia, to absorb the, la the large projects that we have in mind, especially the Latin American Forum every year. So we hope that we can have the vote of trust from Latin America and also of MOFA to allow us to lead the path for our regions towards the integration of our confederation that we can, we hope it is like better established in the near future. And as, as I just said, AMEG is willing to share our experience, knowledge, and tools that we use to start the integration process in Latin America with any other region who might be interested in starting their own integration process. But we also would like to propose not just the integration of each region, but the integration within regions because we hope this becomes another achievement of this meeting. In Mexico, we, we feel like we are a family with the Mexican Mex students, and now we feel like we are a family with the Latin American ones. So we hope that we can organize collaborations between our countries and between our regions, so the networks are not just limited between Mexico and Japan or between Latin America, but probably, I don't know if we hold an event in Latin America, we can have some participation from Oceania or from Eastern Europe. So that would be very interesting that we show to the world that the impact of Japan goes beyond our country and it goes beyond our region and our students are being successful all around the world. Okay. Thank you very much. Hi. Thank you everyone for your interventions and presentations. Your very active discussion was quite encouraging. On the part of MOFA who organized this event, we are very happy. All those inputs and opinions will be duly reflected in promoting activities of the Alumni Association and in promoting our relations with your organizations. Going forward, we look forward to your active implementation of your programs and initiatives, and we are happy to provide support whenever possible. Please also contact the embassies and consulates general with regard to the support you may need back home. Regional online exchange sessions are suggested or other platform to share activities 
we will explore possible good practices of experience sharing. That is another area where we should be working on participated by you as well. This is the final chunk of this session, and due to the time restriction, we cannot have a Q&A session at this time. But your questions and comments can be received on an individual basis, and in the afternoon, there is a joint session with ASEAN countries. That can be another great opportunity to promote further exchanges of views. And allow me to say thank you in English. various new ideas from the other participants. Um, uh, we are also happy to learn that uh, uh, this conference, or it, it seems like uh, this conference has fostered momentum for your future activities as well as uh, ours. Uh, um, it was, uh, your discussion has been very encouraging for us uh, when we consider uh, our future cooperation with your alumni associations. Thank you very much. So with this, uh, we would like to close the fourth Japan alumni conference. Um, lastly, but not least, um, to all those who have been um, with us online, uh, thank you uh, for attending despite your busy schedules um, and also despite the time difference. And we do hope that uh, we can meet again and next time maybe meet the people face-to-face uh, -face, uh, who were joining us online this time. So let's wave and say goodbye to the people online. Thank you. Thank you for your attendance.